I won't go out without putting my face on. And I'm not the only one. This is the daily routine for many women across Wales. But it takes time and money. The average woman spends two years of her life putting on an estimated £12,000 worth of cosmetics. So why do we do it? And who are we really doing it for? I think girls will say that it's for themselves, but I think it'll always be for other people as well. Well, I got to wear this like a mask to me, you know, because I feel naked without it then. I'm 82 in me now, and I'm 88. And you love makeup? Yes. <laughs> it seems to me men are judged on their intelligence and confidence, while women are judged on their looks. I do care when people assume that I'm probably a little bit stupid um, because I like lipstick. For men, makeup is a mystery. <laughs> I don't see why girls do this. It's just too much effort. Rather well, look shocking. But some experts believe it is only for the men that we wear it. When girls go out on a night out and they wear lots of makeup and they show a lot of flesh, they're saying, I've got eggs, I'm fertile. I can't believe, sorry, I can't believe you're saying this. Our face is our identity, so is it wrong to use makeup to try to make the best of it? Or by wearing it, are we distorting ourselves, therefore creating a caricature or a stereotype of women? Ultimately, as I talk to you now, am I covering up just an uneven complexion? Or am I hiding insecurities behind a mask of makeup? Believe it or not, I wasn't that interested in makeup until I was well into my teens. For a while there, I was even a bit of a tomboy. But once I got into it, I loved it, and I've barely had a day without it since. But I can't help wondering, have the pressures on young women changed, even in the short time since I was a youngster? These four young women are preparing for a typical night out. You're not putting full suits on? No. I think we're too tired. tired. <laughs> the conversation is all about makeup and how much to wear. Without it, I look about 12. Oh, yeah, yeah, I still got ID'd and I'm two years old. Yeah. yeah, it's like we have to prove our age by wearing makeup. Yeah. Getting ready is a serious business. The girls each spend between 50 and 100 pounds a month on cosmetics. On the night out, drinking with your friends, putting your makeup on, it's the best thing. It's quite sociable as well, like, we always get ready with the girls. Yeah. After about an hour, they're ready to hit the town. Gorgeous. Grace, how long did it take you, honestly? Probably about an hour. An hour? Yeah. Well, we've been sociable. It was like, you know, the chatting, the drinking, the... Yeah. And what's the average time? Probably about an hour. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the average time? Yeah, it's normally about an hour every day with me. An hour every day of makeup? Yeah. Would you ever go out without makeup? Never anywhere. Why? Um, I just don't feel confident enough. Even, I was saying, even, though, even, even swimming, I wear my entire face going. The girls look fabulous, but the fashion certainly seems to have changed since I was young. It used to be simple, and now it seems to have become a bit of an art. No longer do you need to be a Hollywood film star to put false eyelashes on. Everyone seems to be doing it. But where has this commitment to cosmetics really come from? Since the dawn of humankind, us women have been applying colour, oils and creams to enhance our looks. Celebrity culture and Hollywood have turned that fascination into a multi-billion pound industry. From simple powders and lippies, we've moved on to foundations, primers, correctors, concealers and creams. Lip tint, lip balm, lip stain, lip liner, lip plumper, lip booster and lip gloss. Rouge, blusher, bronzer, highlighter, eyeshadows, eye creams, eyeliner, eyebrow wax, pencils and pens, mascara, volumized mascara, strengthening mascara, smoky eye mascara, lengthening and conditioning mascara. Oh, and lest we forget, good old falsies. Now, more than a quarter of a million people are employed in the beauty industry across the UK. And we have more than our fair share of those jobs here in Wales. This is Colleg Camoyth near Pontypridd, where the salons are filled with women training to become beauticians. 
It's an excellent place to meet somebody who believes a woman's interest in makeup is not just something light and fanciful, it's a biological necessity. Evolutionary psychologist Dr. Lance Workman. Lance, what exactly is an evolutionary psychologist? Well, if we look at traditional psychologists, they're interested in what's going on in the mind, in the brain, and what's going on here and now very much. But evolutionary psychologists, they're also interested in that, but they look at another layer of explanation. So it's what happened in our evolutionary past to create the repertoire of behaviours we have today and what's going on in the mind now. And this really helps when we come to look at things like why do people wear makeup, for example. Part of the reason I'm on this journey is because I don't like the idea that mm. I'm in some way forced to wear makeup. Mm. Am I? No, you're not. One of the findings is that some feminist theorists, not all, but some have claimed that it's actually patriarchal society that forces women to wear makeup. But the evidence is actually quite the reverse. If you look at highly patriarchal societies, women wear less makeup. Men control things and they decide women shouldn't be wearing makeup, which is interesting. If, if you look at very equal societies, women choose to wear more, more makeup. If you're in a, a country where lots of women are wearing lots of makeup, you'll find that's a, a country where things are very, there's a lot of equality there. It's a signal of it. So women choose to do that. No woman should ever be forced to wear makeup, and, and men certainly don't force women to wear makeup. So it's a sign of equality in my eyes. So why do women like myself wear makeup? Well, women have to show sexiness to show that they're fertile. And when girls go out on a night out and they wear lots of makeup and they show a lot of flesh, they're saying, I've got eggs, I'm fertile. I can't believe, sorry, I can't believe you're saying that. They don't know they're saying that. That's not at a conscious level. Right. But an evolutionary analysis of sexual selection tends to suggest cross-culturally that's what women actually do. Lipstick is probably one of the most important things. We know that when a woman is aroused, her lips go red, especially in young women. So wearing lipstick is successful. They've actually studied I'm really this conscious in bars. Now. Stop looking at me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm not wearing lipstick anymore. <laughs> Red is the number one colour, it's the most popular, and it's the most popular with men as well. They've, they've done studies in bars, and if you put women without makeup, the women with lipstick attract a lot more men to them than the women without. Well, that was quite an amusing theory. Lance hasn't quite convinced me that we're wearing makeup to attract a mate, although a lot of it does add up. And every choice I make in the morning is affecting what people think of me, which I hadn't really considered before. I thought I was making the choices. But the idea that we're trying to attract a mate doesn't make sense to me. There's got to be more to it than this. Evolutionary theory tells us that this interest in makeup is instinctive. And yes, some young girls find a makeup box fascinating, but others don't. Student Jessie Ann Lewis writes a makeup blog called All Things Beautiful. Where did her love of makeup come from? I've always liked makeup. I used to do a lot of dancing when I was younger, so we used to wear stage makeup. Um, but I think it was probably when I was about teenage years, you know, experimenting with different styles and things, that I really got into makeup. Um, now I guess it's kind of second nature to me, really, as it is for a lot of women in Wales. Um, I think it's kind of part of your daily routine. You just put it on without having any second thoughts about it, really. And your first job was in a, a makeup store, wasn't it? What did you learn about women's obsession, perhaps, with their appearance? Um, I think for a lot of women, they used to come in the store not just to look good, but to feel good as well. So um, while they used to come in for their skincare essentials then, um, for makeup, it was more of um, a treat. So it was kind of if they've had maybe a good week and thought, oh, I'll treat myself to a new lipstick or something like that. I think it was, I was quite shocked really that it was more about feeling good rather than just looking good. I do believe that sometimes when women care about putting loads of makeup on, maybe spend half an hour in the morning and they touch up throughout the day, they are considered sometimes too superficial to be perhaps successful businesswomen. What do you think? Um, I think there is a lot of um, perceptions around that people who wear makeup can sometimes be seen as an airhead or, you know, that sort of thing, and it's quite superficial. But um, I, don't, I don't think that's true. You know, there's a lot, myself and a lot of my friends, we're, we've done our degrees, we're, you know, training to be teachers, working in journalism and things. So I think it's um, a massive misconception, yeah. When you walk through the makeup counters of any department store, it is simply astounding to see the variety of products on offer. 
So what about Swansea girls of all ages? What's their relationship with makeup? Do you think you would ever go out without makeup? No. Oh, I look as if I've something from day of the day. I haven't got much camera anyway. In the evenings, I use a lot of oil. I feel confident, but I feel more confident when I do when I wear makeup. Yeah, then I got a bit of bush, whatever you call it. <laughs> How long does it take you? Two minutes. Well, three minutes, of course. Three minutes. So here I am, right? <laughs> Would you ever, ever, ever step out of the house without makeup? Um, no, only for the gym. I, I don't even wear makeup for the gym. <laughs> <laughs> My husband always says that we are deceivers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because without makeup, uh, we look like different people. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case you see, you know, the, your future husband or something, you never know. <laughs> I see it an art, really. I quite like trying different looks and experimenting. You can look like a completely different person. I agree with that. Applying makeup is an art. It takes patience, skill, and an awful lot of practice to perfect. Don't believe me? I asked some of the boys from the football team at Collega Camoyf to have a go with my makeup box. <laughs> yeah, pass. Can't even get the wrappers off. Oh, too much. Oh. It's like you have to watch out not to poke yourself in the eye. You've got one eye for the rest of your life. I'm an expert. I don't know. Do you keep your lips wide or do you bring them in like that? Ridiculous. <laughs> no, definitely not. I feel like a million dollars. That looks shocking. It's actually quite fun. <laughs> well, they tried, didn't they? But it is harder than it looks. How does it come off? <laughs> It's clear to me that women have more than one relationship with makeup. To boost confidence, to cover up a spot or a blemish, to make us feel ready to face a stressful situation, like a job interview. And, yes, sometimes to impress a partner. Why not? But when it comes to making ourselves attractive, is it a case of less is more? Academics at Bangor University recently carried out a large study to find out how much makeup men and women found to be attractive. The results were surprising. We wanted to find out what the optimum level of cosmetics was. And to do that, what we did was we asked uh, some women volunteers, we call them our models, that we photographed them with and without their makeup. We showed these to people and said, just choose the one that you think looks most attractive. Our first result was that men and women preferred some cosmetics use, but that our models were using way too much in the way of makeup. So in fact, our observers preferred about half the level of makeup that the models were actually using. The biggest misunderstanding that we found was women's expectations about what men liked. Women assumed men really liked high levels of cosmetics. But in fact, what people prefer is less makeup. Yeah. Inspired by Banger's study, I set up an experiment of my own. I used three photos of the same girl. One without makeup, one with just a little, and one very heavily made up. The rugby boys of Collega Camoyth came along to help me out. Did they agree with the Banger University study? I'd say the one that's most attractive is the one on the right. The one on the right. I think the one on the right. Yes, the photo on the right was the one with just a little makeup. Uh, it's like it's got a nice balance to it, like makeup and natural. She looks more natural. She doesn't look fake. She's got like a natural look to her. She looks like genuine. One of the really powerful effects in psychology is the attractiveness halo. So if we judge someone to be attractive, then we also infer that that person is not only attractive, but they're you know friendly, they're trustworthy, they're smart. Which one looks most friendly? Um, again, I think it's the one on the right. And the one that's most likable is the one on the right, because again, it's just, she looks normal, genuine, and like down to earth. 
Perceptions about the feminine ideal are deep set. A recent survey of British teenage girls found that 87% of those questioned felt that women were judged more on their appearance than on their ability. For me, it's all about this. Page after page after page of perfect faces. Airbrushed images of models and Hollywood stars. A pressure to have the perfect skin, the perfect eyes, the perfect lips. And everything magnified by selfies and social media. Dr. Yan Wu has researched the relationship between the media and the beauty industry. Does she agree with me about the pressure women are put under? Advertisement today is very cleverly designed. They often incorporate feminist ideals into selling. So even you are forced into buying, but the advertisers give you the impression you made that choice. You made yourself uh, look better and uh, you are the one who achieved that look. If audience are exposed to same message, repeated message again and again, their outlook will be shaped by that message. What about in the workplace? Are women more successful if they wear makeup? I would like to ask another question. Do we judge men on the way they look or on their ability? We rarely see men wear heavy makeup, especially in workplace. So why women's face is become like the extension of the suit. You have to put on makeup to, to complete this formal look. Why men are not subject to such control. I think in workplace, women should be judged by their ability, just like men. So this singling women out itself, I think, is a kind of sexist attitude. If we apply, a double stand, apply double standards to men and women, we can never achieve real gender equality, can we? One very <laughs> modern issue is the phenomenon of selfies people taking photographs of themselves to post online and the way women feel they have to make themselves up before doing it. I can take pictures on Snapchat or selfies without me wearing a makeup, but I think whenever I put makeup, I prefer to take selfies. Are you a selfie taker? I am. Yes, <laughs> she is. <laughs> when, you, when you're snapping, would you ever do it without makeup? No. No. Really? Never? I've done it once, but that's to like my friends. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't put it on Facebook or nothing. Oh, it's got to be just... perfect on Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Selfie has become a culture itself. So many young people, they can't avoid taking a selfie. And I have to say the beauty industry tapped into this market again. I noticed in some recent glossy magazine, there's actually line of a beauty product tailored for girls who use gym and taking selfies at the same time. So you can achieve that natural look in the gym and that your selfie will look great. And what about the bare-faced selfie? What did you make of all that? Now we regard wearing makeup as norm, while not wearing makeup is something courageous, something brave, something exceptional. So the natural look without makeup becomes something so strange, so alien to our culture, where the norm is wearing makeup. So aren't our face good enough? As a woman, I do feel that there's an expectation to wear makeup. And whether I'm going to the supermarket for a pint of milk or whether I'm going out for the evening, I'd be no more likely to forget my makeup than forget my shoes. But there are women who don't or won't wear makeup. And I'm intrigued to find out why. Oh. Honey, hello, come on in. Hi, hi, hi. Mavanwi, facially, I feel overdressed speaking to you now. Why do you choose not to wear makeup? Well, there's a number of reasons, Connie. The first one is I'm not very good at it. And I also have a little bit of a thing about having to present myself through a mask um, and I kind of think, well, this is who I am. 
I think we all present ourselves in different ways. It's about the way we talk, it's about how we choose, the words we choose to use, the gestures, the way we dress. And some people feel that makeup helps them present themselves, but it's something that I've never actually felt I needed to do. Um, and I suppose for that reason, uh, I've never felt pressured to do it um, and have never started. And you went on University Challenge, didn't you? Yeah, well, see, that was quite an interesting thing because I was on University Challenge with three chaps and we all went into makeup and the chaps came out looking identical to how they'd gone in with just a little bit of something to take the shine bit down. Bit of powder. Yeah, yeah, just to take the shine down. I was completely transformed into someone unrecognisable. So I went to the, to the loo and I washed my face and then I got a tremendous row. And uh, they said, you can't appear like this. And I said, well, why not? Because this is how I am. And I felt that what was quite noticeable to me was that the three chaps were not expected to change the way they looked in order to appear on television. But I was expected to transform myself in order to be acceptable. And without putting on my very tired and faded old feminist hat, yeah, I felt that was a bit odd. Have you ever felt less feminine in any way for not choosing to wear makeup? I don't think I have, mm. but then again it's worth saying that I suppose my ovaries have done that for me. I have had six children, so nobody can accuse me of not being a woman. I mean, I spent the 80s pregnant. So it's never been political? You're never going to wave a placard at me? Oh gosh, no, definitely not. Makeup should be about making you more yourself, mm. not just a mask to hide behind. Well, that was very interesting. Mavan, we clearly has a very different relationship with makeup to the one I have. She's very relaxed about not wearing it. And it's got me thinking, maybe I should be a little bit more relaxed about it too. But if I did have a day or do without makeup completely, I don't know if I'd feel like myself. I'm clearly not alone in thinking that. While Mavanwi says she spends her money on books and red wine, many of us are out buying cosmetics. British women spend more than £8 billion every year on makeup, making the cosmetics industry a hugely powerful one. Welsh writer Sally Hughes is the author of Pretty Honest, a book about the beauty industry. Through her columns in Cosmopolitan, Grazia and The Guardian, Sally has become one of Britain's leading commentators on the world of makeup. It's a really complex issue. I wear makeup every day and I, I'm wondering why, why I do it. Mm -hmm. Is it presentation or is it pressure in some way? I mean, it can, be, it can be a million different things and it can be a different thing on a different day. Makeup helps you sort of decide who you want to be that day. Do you want to be sort of very glamorous? Do you want to be more pared down? It's a really powerful tool in that way. For very many women, um, putting on their makeup is the only time they spend on themselves all day. And that sort of ritual can be a pleasure. So we're using it as an expression. But what would you say to someone who thinks it's frivolous, superficial vanity? I don't, I mean, I don't really care that they think that. Um, but what I do care about is, as somebody who writes a great deal about beauty, I do care when people assume that I'm probably a little bit stupid um, because I like lipstick. And this seems to me to be the most spectacularly thick way of looking at the world and people generally. You know, we're multifaceted people. It's perfectly possible to be engaged in politics and current affairs. I have to be because of my job. I could not be more engaged with those things. But I also like lipstick. I, ca I cannot see why women are presumed to only be able to focus on one thing, their appearance. There are many, many things that you can think and do at the same time because that is the human condition. <laughs> So many women who've gone through the worst times because they've had cancer or they've gone through some dreadful bereavement or other illness, they have really relied on those daily rituals of putting on their makeup, feeling their best, choosing an outfit. It becomes a hugely important coping strategy when everything feels chaotic and a mess. And I completely understand that. And I think anybody who knows anything about women will understand that. Sally's point about needing to look good, even when we feel at our lowest, speaks volumes to me. It tells me that beauty isn't just a skin-deep issue. It can make us feel better on the inside, too. Should we get started? Yes. Let's get started. What we're actually going to do today, we're going to follow a 12-step programme, OK? So we're going to start with your cleanser maker. These three women have been treated for cancer. 
They have had a huge amount on their minds, but how they look is still important to them. More important than ever, perhaps. I could do with confidence yeah. boosting. <laughs> After, you know, five stone I put on nearly through treatment. <laughs> so is this right? They are at a makeup workshop organised by Look Good, Feel Better. The charity uses cosmetics to improve the self confidence and morale of women who are going through treatment for cancer. Ladies, all three of you have been affected by cancer. Sandra, what effect did that have on your identity? I think the obvious thing is, is visually, is, is losing, losing my hair, um, losing my eyebrows and eyelashes. And that was because of chemo? That was through ke chemotherapy, yeah. Um, and even though I was expecting it to happen, I thought I was prepared for it, but I, but I wasn't. And when your hair's coming out in by a handful, um, I didn't want to go out. By using the makeup, it, it sort of detracts, I think, from, from my hair. So it, um, even though I was feeling unwell, and I do feel unwell, I don't have to look unwell. For a woman, it, it can be really devastating to lose your hair. Um, and, and I think the fact that I could put the makeup on and it sort of detracted away from the fact that I didn't have any hair, it made so much of a difference. Go so fast. Sarah's cancer is terminal. She's been given only a few years to live. Deep inside, you're thinking, oh gosh, yeah, I just don't feel good. But the makeup just looks, makes you look good. And regardless of how you're feeling inside, really, like to look in the mirror. How do you feel? I love it. You love it. Gorgeous. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so for me today, it was great coming and speaking to other people mm. about it as well. It makes you open up, I yeah. think, mm -hmm. especially if you're not a person that opens up. Mm -hmm. And the finished effect, sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to three ladies tells me that for them, it's not about attracting a mate. It's not even about confidence. It's about wearing it for themselves, using makeup as a tool to brighten their darkest days. And it surprised me, actually, that something so seemingly superficial can have such an empowering effect on women. And I think that has moved me more than I knew lip gloss and blusher ever could. While our appearance may instantly say something about us, ultimately, to wear or not to wear is our own choice to make. So it seems the power of makeup is in our hands. If we want to, we can use it to subtly highlight our beauty, or if we prefer, plaster over our insecurities. It's a modern day magic wand, and if used to best effect, it can transform us physically and emotionally. And that, I think, is a very handy thing to have at our fingertips.